back to Why in the Morning right here on Y254 channel. At Y254 channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles at Michelle Ashira is where you can find me across all my social. If it's Wednesday, it's Woman Crush Wednesday. And in this particular segment, we dive into the woman, the, the strength of a woman. And I have in studio none other than Jerry Mwingi, who is a co-founder and uh, executive director of Usikime. So our topic of discussion, we're looking at uh, the gender-based sexual violence. So we all know that violence against uh, women and girls is one of the world's most uh, prevalent human rights violation. And that is why we need to have this conversation. And in studio, as I said earlier on, I am joined by Jerry Muike, who is the co-founder and executive director of Usikime. Hi, Jerry. Hello. How are you doing? I'm very well. Thank you. Welcome to our studio. Thank you very much. How are you doing? As well as it can be. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So tell us more about uh, Usikimia and uh, where it all uh, rooted from and how you started the organization. Um, Usikimia, as you're well aware, is a Swahili word for do not be silent. Absolutely. And uh, Usikimia was founded um, by myself and my, my, my friend, my co-founder, Stella Kachina. Uh, when we started with Sikimia, the idea behind it was to bring around the sensitization, the awareness about gender-based violence, what to do in case it happens to you, mm -hmm. and um, that kind of a scenario. So we started as a Facebook page to bring sensitization, because especially we started last year, formally. We were doing it individually, but formally as a registered organization, we started last year. Uh, we felt that uh, there was a need to talk to people, especially young girls and even women who are going through certain issues. Remember last year there was a lot of women that died. Actually, on the count had 139 women who died due to femicide. Mm -hmm. And uh, femicide is being killed by your lover or husband Absolutely. or spouse, yeah. So we felt there was a need to just talk to people and just bring across that love doesn't have to hurt and you can always have an option of leaving instead of staying. Okay. So it started as a sensitization and awareness mm -hmm. campaign. Mm -hmm. What we didn't know is that it would grow to become an organization that uh, rescues women, houses uh, victims, I mean, survivors of domestic as well as sexual violence, as well as actually do rescues and rehoming. Mm, that's yeah. actually uh, an amazing initiative there. I would like to find out from a personal level, mm -hmm. have you engaged or have you been in a situation whereby you've been exposed to violence that rooted to you wanting to speak out uh, for the violated people in society? They say one in every three women in this country will go through as some sort of um, GBV. Yes. That, that's the acronym for it. And yes, in my past, yes, what I have What experience been. like? If, would, do you mind sharing that is? Mm. What Briefly. was my experience like? Yeah, I was married pretty young. Mm -hmm. uh, we had no business, both of us, getting married to each other. We were both young. I was much, much younger. And um, yeah, as it is prone to be when, you know, you were not ready to get married or you're not in a position where you should have gotten married, mm -hmm. um, there was a lot of domestic violence. Right. Yeah. Well, what would you say uh, that looking back right now, would you identify the couple of red flags that she saw in this particular partner of yours at that particular time? Um, let, me, let me say this. If somebody hits you the first time, run, sister, run. Mm -hmm. Don't even look back. There is no change in these people. The idea that I stayed because I thought, ah, you know, it isn't so bad. It's not like as bad as other people. You know, it's maybe mm -hmm. once every three months, maybe once a year. But let me tell you, it culminated in me losing part of my hearing. So, yeah. So, he, they don't change. Mm -hmm. They may change for a season. Okay. So, the first red flag is the minute he even raises his hand. That is the minute you should walk. Don't wait for what is eventually going to come. If you can't, take your things or take your baby and just run. Uh, did you feel like... Uh, you lost a part of you uh, and that you had to recover and how long did it take you and what were the process that you went to just find yourself? Um, healing is a gradual, is, is gradual. Uh, you would think you're healed. I mean, it's been over 10 years. 
and I, I often think I'm healed. And then I'm often times I'm really, really angry. And yes, I've gone through therapy mm -hmm. and I've gone through the healing process in order for me to be able to actually help other women. Of course, I've had to work on myself and work on my anger issues. And then eventually even got married. So that should tell you a lot of mm -hmm. the process that um, I went through. But it's a gradual process and you should give, you, give yourself time. Just like you're mourning, um, you know, divorce, and you know separation is equivalent to almost losing somebody the only difference is that this person may occasionally pop up in yeah, your you radar actually yeah. see them and you may actually even have a child with them so there's that constant reminder yes exactly right. okay so let's let's take it back to when it comes to the femicide aspect of it whereby people just get into relationships uh, for probably the wrong reasons or because you know if you fell in love and all that then maybe you are involved with a manipulative person a narcissist and actually don't know all these red flags that are coming or popping up so what would you be your advice for you know these young people are getting into early relationships um the thing with these people is that you don't know. You know, when you're getting into a relationship, it's colored. You know, you're, you're coming in with expectations. You're coming in thinking it's going to be rosy. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that you should look out, there are different forms of abuse. Mm -hmm. There's emotional abuse. It doesn't always have to be about just being physical abuse. Mm -hmm. There's emotional abuse. There's financial abuse. When you're getting into this relationship, Look, is it a healthy functional relationship? What boundaries do I have? Does this person allow me to be myself in this relationship? Because in a relationship, if I'm outspoken, and all of a sudden your friends are telling you, why do you, Kwani, what happened to you? Why are you shrinking? Why are you changing? A relationship should be about you flowering. You've ever seen how a flower looks like? You know, it's a bud and it's closed up. And if this relationship isn't opening you up and being you being the person that you're meant to be, then are you really in the right relationship? That should be one of the red flags. Does this person tell you, this is what you're going to do, this is how you're going to dress, this is what you're going, this is the place you're going to be? These incessant phone calls, somebody's always checking up on you, ukawapi. At first it sounds like love, like, yeah. oh my God, my guy loves me so much. Mm -hmm. No, check, does he really love you or is he monitoring your movement? What if they say that men are possessive and it's just a way of just... No, we need to stop that conversation of men are. Men are not. This person is. Mm. Stop saying men are. You know, that gives people the excuse to get away with things because we put it in a certain way that men are. Men are not. They, this is a person, this is an individual, and at an individual level, he's doing this. Don't use this as an excuse to let him get away with manipulating you or taking control over your life. All right. And then there's another angle located whereby you're involved with the person. And then they put you on a pedestal. And then a moment later, you are not as good as they think you were. Then, uh, they, then the, the dismissal. Now, that is a problem. I also, I'm, I'm not God, I don't want to be adored. <laughs> because like every other human, mm -hmm. I have an Achilles heel and I'm bound to fail. What happens if I fail? Yes. Then when you fail and you fall down and you realize I'm just human, what happens? Mm -hmm. Isn't that when you become vulnerable and then you start beating me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how does inequality lead to gender-based violence? Um, let's TPV. look at it this way. Actually, that is the main cause of TPV. If, let's say for example, you're the person Say in this example, a man is the basic provider of everything. That, that means he has the keys to everything that I need. Also, in terms of just look at how inequality works. Um, we, are, we live in an, an obviously an unequal world, right? And um, if I cannot be able to provide for my kids and provide for myself, and I'm stuck with somebody because this person provides for me, not because we love each other, not because there is anything left, this person decides I am a burden. What happens to you? You probably feel like you need to stay because there's no way out. That's it. So you, you lose your own humanity. You lose your own, your own person because you need to be with this person for things that you cannot be able to provide for yourself. If, let's say, you give everybody an equal platform, that even if today I walk out or the man walks out, mm -hmm and I walk out, I can still be able to take care of myself the same way even if no other person was there. Oh. Girls need to be given a platform to be able to be the people they need to be. 
All right. What type of mindset should then uh, be changed in terms of the kind of uh, union that we have? That if I'm getting married, then, you know, I can forego whatever I was interested in, my interest probably no. was working. Then I'm. You know, First of all, be as society, mm -hmm. we need to look at, we need to stop looking at marriage as though it's an achievement. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's not an achievement. It's, yes. it's just something that happens. Like you are friends, you're not friends. Marriage is not the end of life or the beginning of life. Marriage mm -hmm. is just what it is. It's a good thing if it is healthy and mm -hmm. functional. Yeah, because I get it that the fact that society expects you at a particular age, you're supposed to graduate, get a job, and then get, get married. married. Get children. Get children. Yes. You There's see, we need to stop normalizing the fact that not everybody wants children. Not everybody looks at you know, getting married as that is the ultimate thing. It's a good thing when mm -hmm. it works. It's a beautiful thing. But what happens in this particular society where we don't have functional working marriages, a lot of them, what are we telling our children? We're telling our children that we're telling girls that the only thing that they need to aspire to is marriage. Tell your girls to aspire to be scientists. Tell your girls to aspire to go to space. Tell them they can be mechanics. Tell them they can be anything that they choose to be, including being a wife, if that is the ultimate goal. But tell them that there is more to life than getting married and being a baby making machine. Mm -hmm. Yeah? There's you, more to you. There is more to it can come and be a, like you, a newscaster, you can be like me, an activist. There are so many things that girls can aspire to be, you know, mm -hmm. and change the world while at it. But if the only thing somebody is doing is, let me finish school, haraka raka, and I get, and I go ahead and get married. And then what happens if that marriage fails? Where does that leave that person? But if this person has something else that they have set aside to be and long to be, Marriage just comes to just complement and supplement their existence, not become their whole, you know, everything that they, they are. All right. Uh, allow me to take you back on the aspect of healing, right? Uh, during the time where COVID was just uh, hitting us in the country, and then there was the lockdown. Most people got locked down with different people. Because when we talk about GBV, it could be from even our family members, it could mm. be from partners, it could be from friends, right? And you experience a sort of balance from the type of uh, GBV that you mentioned, verbal, physical. Then what comes of healing? What is the process of healing looking like? Um, first of all, with COVID, COVID, COVID brought a lot of cracks that are actually in society, in marriages, at homes, in everywhere, because um, it means we actually, as I said, functional, functional working families. Um, with it, it brought a lot of cracks in relationships. So therefore, to mend these cracks, where you're already angry, let's just say, in an, again, an unequal society, you're frustrated, you have no job, there's no money coming in, therefore you're prone to maybe violence, whichever verbal, whatever violence that is there. Then obviously you hit this person, or um, in case it's a child, it happens that a lot of child during this season were also molested. What the healing process now for these people depends on individual to individual. As I keep on saying all the time, we need therapy as a nation. We need a lot of therapy. Healing has to come with the self-realization and actualization that I am not okay. I need to start working on my inner person. You ever meet people who are just angry and you're wondering what yeah, is the problem? You, you yeah. know, it's a small thing and it becomes... Like the yes. And this person, if you actually look at them, they still have a lot of process that they need to work on their inner self. Because they were hurt, maybe as a child, maybe as an adult, you don't know. But most of these people who have been in violent situation, you'll find, for example, this person comes from a violent background. Mm -hmm. Maybe they saw their mother being beaten. Mm -hmm. They grew up not understanding what was happening. And then even as, an, as a person now, this person becomes equally violent. All right. Yeah. Let's, look, let's look, go back to uh, the Destiny Rescue Center, right? Mm. Let's look at uh, the kind of activities that you guys do at Uskimia that actually, you know, promote the fact that GBV is not actually allowed. What are a couple of activities and, uh, that you're actually out there and are doing as an organization? Um, one of the things we do as an organization is run a home. Mm -hmm. Our, it's a halfway home. Okay. It's not like a children's home or anything. We are a halfway home for women and children who've been through GBV. Mm -hmm. So for us, it's women who come into the home with their children. 
they are maybe escaping the domestic situation at home. So they come in, we have counseling, we have therapy. For the kids, we have music therapy, we have art therapy, we have play therapy. They also, every morning, 9 to 12, they have regular classes where they can just learn English and math just to keep their minds occupied, not think about the things that went on at home. Mm -hmm. We also have yoga and meditative walks. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's very interesting. Yeah. Because <laughs> I've, I've heard you mention a couple of arts for the children. So how do you penetrate to the children? Because it's different from an adult. An adult will just pick out their heart and they'll tell you what they've been going through. But how do you penetrate to the children to get them to... Um, what they have been going through. With children, it's, it becomes easier when you use now things like art. And you just give a kid a, a paper and crayons and you help them to just color their world. And from there you can actually, the counselor can actually look at what they're coloring. Mm -hmm. The darker it is, that's how you learn. Depending on what the kid is coloring, how they're viewing their world. If they're drawing into dark lines, you know, dark colors, blacks, dark blues, dark browns, then you know that their world is not bright. A child whose world is okay will tend to gravitate towards brighter colors. But a child who gravitates toward darkness means their views have been colored by what they have seen. All right. Yes. Yeah, so and how do you get to run the organization in terms of finances? We are self-funded. We have an Mchanga number mm -hmm. and that Kenyans normally give to us, especially on Facebook. That's where people know us from. So we normally, people donate to us through that. Oh, well, uh, you could just mention the Facebook page so that people can... Our page is called Usikimia. Usikimia. Yeah, both on Facebook and on Twitter. All right. Mm. Instagram? Yes, we also have Instagram, Usikimia. Okay. We're just Usik not as active. Usikimia. <laughs> all both, all through, yeah. Uh, very mm. quite uh, uh, simple that people can easily access. Yes. All right, so well, let's, talk let's talk about the safety of uh, the survivors and also how can people reach out if they have an emergency. Mm. What do you mean the safety? Uh, the safety of the survivors in terms of where they are. Is it like a place where the, the measures that you've taken oh. uh, so that they, they, they can they, feel safe. Exactly. We, uh, again, as I said, our halfway house is a safe house. It's actually right. considered as a safe house. Because I actually asked you the location, you're like, mm -mm. Yeah, no, we don't give up the location. <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah. we actually come and pick you up mm -hmm. if you need to be admitted to the safe house. One of the things is you need to have an OB mm -hmm. from the police okay. so that it is not that you are missing. We had a very big issue last week. So that you're not considered as a missing person, we recommend that you actually... No, actually one of the conditions is you need to have an OB from the police where you have stated your case and you have reported that you are a survivor of domestic violence or sexual violence. And if you've gone to hospital, we require documents. Most of the times, the women we have and the children have gone through either of this and we participated in taking. Actually from here, I'm actually going to pick someone. We go to hospital and then report the matter. And then now we, 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 we take them into our home. Alright, how yeah. often do you get the calls? Many, many times. Let's give it an approximately like in a period of a month. Uh, let, me, let me just give you in a period of a day. Okay. Uh, let's forget about a month. Oh, all right. I get between 10 to 15 calls a day. In a day? Mm. Wow, it's a lot. It's a lot. Some could be just wanting advice, counseling, or they need to go to hospital. Alright, before we even look at the government and what the government has done, uh, in order to rescue uh, so the survivors, the victims, that is, in that aspect uh, of GBV. Let's go back to, on a personal level, what can we do to just prevent and uh, be out, bring out the outspoken uh, awareness that is of, in GBV? Uh, we need to stop hiding. We need to stop hiding these issues. You know your friend is getting hit. You know that you're getting hit. And um, we keep on covering it up. Um, I know so many people, myself included, that used to say we've been hit by a door or I fell down the stairs or this and this thing. Reach out to someone. There's help out here. Reach out. I mean, that's very important. Stop hiding. Stop covering it up. Stop, you know, uh, tell someone what you're going through. Why is there shame in violence? And you are actually the victim. Yeah. Um, Where's the that feeling Aibu. That, yeah, you Aibu. yes that's what you're trying to break it's the taboo of silence that surrounds gbv because it's always made it's this is one of those things in life that you are the person who's been perpetrated upon but you're the person who's always made to feel like it's your fault 
because we've normal you know it's not working it must be your fault mm -hmm. why were you being beaten you see every every person say kwani alimchapa eh why was she hit she must have done something no i mean if a thief comes and robs you of your of your necklace what did you do to make the thief come and, and 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 grab it you did nothing mm -hmm. but somehow when it comes to issues of gbv or even rape utaskia people asking what was she wearing why was she passing in a dark place? We need to stop. It's called victim blaming, and we are very good at it. Because as you said, when we began, you said that uh, GBV is a widely accepted you know, crime. It's a socially accepted ill. We are okay. I mean, see, we always cover it, especially here. We always say two people that cover themselves in one blanket. Me, mm. I won't be involved. You, you be see involved. why these people hide? You, yeah. you get shamed because... They also forget there's something called trauma bonding where you're, you know, this is your husband. This is somebody you've been intimate with. Somebody you have children. It's not just easy at he, you'll just pick your bag and go. You probably pick your bag, he'll come, he'll talk to you. He knows you. He knows mm -hmm. your, suit, your soft spots and you'll come back. And then people get mad at you for going back. They forget this is a process. I will remove you. I'll even take you to a shelter. I will stay with you for the three months. You'll go through the mandated counseling and there's a chance that you'll still go back to your abuser. Wow. Because you are intimately tied together. I watched an interview of Rihanna when the time she was mm -hmm. physically violated, mm -hmm. and she said that it took her seven times before she left. Yes, it's approximately the correct number of times before you actually leave. Seven good times. Yes. Wow, it's a lot. It's a lot, but again, as I said, this is why it's called intimate partner violence, not just domestic abuse. Mm -hmm. It's intimate partner violence. It's somebody you are intimate with. Somebody you know, you love, you have a bond with. You've bonded with this person. So it's not easy. It's mm -hmm. not like a job that I can resign. This and is go start over all over and again. Exactly. This past. is somebody that you leave and then you regret immediately. You're like, wow, have I done the wrong mistake? Uh, this person knows you, knows your deepest, darkest secrets. Yes, yeah, Knows your innermost person. Your weak points. Yeah, weak points. He knows how to talk you into coming back, you know? And yeah. then, of course, there's a societal expectations. You're supposed to be married or mm. you're supposed to be in a relationship or whatever. Or he also, this person also looks like I'm a good man. Or he also looks like I'm a good woman in case of where, yeah, these things happen. And nobody really, really, people are like, mm. hey, but Nani is such a good, he's such a good provider. And mm. so on and so forth. So there's always a society pressure. All right. So how can guys find you on social media again? And also the emergency number they can call. Uh, our number is 0718-158-400. That's simple. Okay. Probably, please repeat that number again. 0718 one five eight four hundred. All right. Thank you very much, Jeremy, co-founder and executive director of Osikime. Thank you for creating time to be with us today. No problem. You're welcome. All right. So, guys, that uh, that is the conversation on GBV. Make sure don't keep silent. There's no any form of uh, embarrassment when it comes to violence. Speak out and make sure you look out for yourself and your loved ones. So, we'll be right back on more on why in the morning. So, make sure you stay tuned.